So today I'm here to talk to you about expectations. Expectations that you and I have as consumers. Right. I'm going to share a few examples of when my expectations weren't met that I hope will resonate with you. And if it does, I want you to just nod or raise your hand, anything to let me know that you agree. Sound good? OK, so a few weeks ago, I was on a plane from New York to San Francisco. And I really need to get some work done. But the Wi-Fi wasn't working. And I looked at my seatmates and thought, how is this even possible in this day and age? I expect things to just work, right? Or when I'm shopping on my phone and I get all the way to checkout, and it asks me to manually fill in 10 fields in a form, I get annoyed that Chrome Autofill isn't enabled. I expect things to be easy. Or when I'm trying to log into an app, and it asks me to remember one of the dozens of usernames and passwords I have, I get frustrated that I can't just use my fingerprint to log in like I do with my phone. I expect things to be fast, one step ideally. And as a consumer, I take all of these micro expectations and I bubble them into one macro expectation that I take with me to every commercial experience I have, whether that's in store, on digital, but especially on mobile. And as marketers, it's critical to understand these expectations because you're not dealing or you're not competing with other brands in your category. You are competing with the best experience a consumer has ever had. Because we love our devices, right? But what we love more is the power that our devices give us. If you think about it, you can pay for a coffee with the tap of a phone. You can deposit a check simply by snapping a photo of it. We can get what we want instantly and effortlessly. And we can have our needs not just met, but anticipated. Now, this is pretty profound to us as consumers, but it's even more profound to us as marketing professionals, because we're dealing with a consumer who is more empowered than ever before. And what comes with this heightened empowerment? Heightened expectations for every single interaction he or she has with your brand. And the stakes are rising, especially on mobile. 46% of people say they want to use their smartphone to complete the entire purchase journey, from research to buying. But then they often abandon it out of frustration. And marketers tell me, well, you know, mobile conversions are still lower than desktop. But it's not because consumers don't want to transact on mobile. It's because the experiences being offered to them are subpar. For example, who here has been frustrated if a site takes too long to load, right? Or it's difficult to navigate, or difficult to find what you're looking for. Our research shows that these are the top three reasons a user will abandon a mobile site. Because we want things to just be fast and seamless. We are living in a time when mobile user experience matters more than brand loyalty. Let me give you a personal example. So there's this pizza place that I was obsessed with. I used to order from them pretty much every Friday night. And one Friday night, I became really hangry. You guys know what that means? Yeah. My friends and family know I get really hangry. And I became so frustrated with the user experience that I ended up switching to one of their competitors. Now, it's not my first choice for pizza, but it didn't matter. I was, I was hungry. I just wanted to eat. And so in that moment, user experience mattered more to me than brand loyalty. All right, so what do we do about this? How do we keep up as marketers? How do we keep up with these rising consumer expectations? There are three things I want you to consider. Each user, each step, and each second. So the first, each user, is all about personalized experiences. As consumers, we want things to be relevant to us. Now, I'm not talking about retargeting a user that's landed on your website. I'm talking about creating value for someone based on your shared history with them.
But marketers tell me, well, you know, I don't invest in personalized experiences because I can't quantify the business impact. Well, we surveyed leading marketers, meaning those who have exceeded their business objectives in the last year, and 90% of them say that personalization significantly contributes to business profitability. Let's take a look at an example. So Hyundai uses personalization to appeal to the needs of different car shoppers. So if you're early on in the car buying process and say you're looking to buy an SUV, they'll take you to a landing page that allows you to compare different SUV models on things like list price, interior, built-in technologies. But say you're further down in the funnel and you know exactly the type of model you're interested in, they'll take you to a page that lets you know what dealerships nearby have that specific model on their lot. And personalization is really working for them. It's actually driving more customers into their dealerships. Remember, personalization isn't a feature. It's a strategy and one that's critical to experience. So I urge you to spend time with your user data and your site analytics, maybe even recruit a data science team to help you understand how you can create these relevant experiences for users. Okay, the second thing you need to consider is each step. How do we create these seamless and consistent experiences for users? Like, how do we wow them across their journey, whether that's in-store, on digital, or on mobile? A company that's been doing this exceptionally well is Domino's. So just five years ago, it took 25 steps to place an order with Domino's. That's a lot. Today, you can seamlessly place an order on their app or on their mobile site. And you can rattle off a voice order on a home assistant. You can even send a pizza emoji over social media, your smartwatch, or the TV. In fact, there are over 15 ways you can place an order with Domino's, none of which take more than five steps. As a result of these efforts, over 60% of their orders now come through, on, through digital, with more than half of that coming through mobile. Between 2009 and 2016, they were actually able to increase their market share from 9% to 15%, which is pretty amazing, right? Okay, the third thing you need to consider, and arguably the lowest hanging fruit, is each second. And this has to do with mobile speed. Because as consumers, we're pretty impatient, right? We want things to be fast. We want them to be frictionless. But here's the reality. On average, it takes over 15 seconds for a mobile page to fully load. And marketers tell me, well, mobile speed is a developer problem, something that someone else in the organization should care about. But it's not a marketer problem, it's not a developer problem, it's a business problem. Mobile speed can materially impact your bottom line. In fact, 53% of mobile site visits are abandoned if a page takes more than three seconds to load. Furthermore, a one second delay in page load times can impact conversions by up to 20% according to a recent retail study. So if you're not thinking about speed, you really should be. And investing in speed starts with each one of you in the room, because remember, you aren't just competing with other brands in your category, I don't care if they're the best brands. You are competing with the best experience a consumer's ever had. So be maniacal about shaving seconds off of your low times and adding more conversions to your bottom line. And at Google, we wanna help. So with that, I'd like to introduce Avery Cavanaugh, Product Marketing Manager on Mobile Web, who's gonna talk about the ways that Google is helping marketers like you create faster and better experiences for users. Thank you. Thank you, Alana. Alana just shared that the average mobile web page fully loads in 15.3 seconds. When you hear that stat, you have to think to yourself, oh crap, where do I fall on that spectrum? Am I faster? Am I slower? Well, I took the liberty of looking at a number of the sites for the people attending this conference. <laughs> and I found out your sites merely start to load in one 
to 15 seconds. That means it's one to 15 seconds before anything at all happens on your page, let alone your site is fully loaded and your users can engage with the content you've all worked so hard to create. Alana also shared that over half of all mobile site visits are abandoned if the page takes longer than three seconds to fully load. So in conjunction with the fact that your pages are just starting to load in one to 15 seconds, you can see that there's a tremendous opportunity to get more visitors and improve your ROI. And as marketers and content creators, we can't afford to lose eyes or leave money on the table. And that's why it's so important to recognize the critical impact that speed has on your ROI. And that's why we at Google take mobile experiences so seriously. We spend a lot of time thinking about how we can help make the web faster and more frictionless for our users. And that's why we recently announced that starting in July 2018, so really just around the corner, page speed will be a ranking factor in organic, in organic mobile searches. That means if your page is chronically slow, your ranking in organic search will be impacted. On the flip side, for paid advertising, speed already impacts your advertising ROI. That's because faster pages deliver a better landing page experience. And landing page experience is an important factor in quality score. So if you're not thinking about landing page experience today, you really should be. So I'm a little obsessed with mobile user experiences. My team and I think about it all of the time. And I've talked with countless marketers and content creators about their sites and their campaigns. So I know how difficult it is to not just understand site speed, but prioritize it over other elements on your site. And there are tools that will tell you how fast your page loads, but they're really targeted at your developer. They don't give you the context you need as a marketer to know why you should care. They might tell you your page loads in 6,500 milliseconds. But is that good on 3G? Is that bad on 4G? To be honest, I can't tell you without knowing what, what region you're targeting, what, who your competitors are. And that's why I'm so excited to announce or share two new tools. Um, these tools are gonna help you not just understand your mobile site speed, but give you the tools you need to communicate it to the people in your business. First, the mobile speed scorecard. The speed scorecard is an easy to use tool that lets you understand how your mobile site speed compares to your competitors. This is the first step to improving your mobile user experience because the first step is always recognizing that you have a problem. Simply enter your URL and the URLs of your competitors, the region you're targeting, and boom, you see how you stack up. We just launched this tool at Mobile World Congress less than a month ago. And since then, we've just had an amazingly positive response from our advertisers and our publishers because everybody wants to know how they stack up. How do they compare? Who's winning? In fact, while I was at the conference, a marketer came up to me and shared that he discovered his site just started to load in 12 seconds. And his competitors all loaded in under six. He couldn't believe it. And neither could his VP. It was a really pivotal moment where they realized they had to start prioritizing site speed. Because here's the thing, even if your site is fast, if you're not as fast as your competitors, you're likely losing visitors to them. Step two. Step two is you need to communicate the importance of mobile site speed to your entire organization and understand the impact that it has on your business. We know this isn't easy. That's why we recently announced the impact calculator. The impact calculator estimates the amount of revenue that you're leaving on the table by having a slow mobile site. Simply enter a few key metrics, either you or probably the person who sits right next to you will have them, and in a few seconds you'll know how much additional revenue you could possibly earn by speeding up your site. And this has kind of been a come from behind success because we thought the speed scorecard would get all the love, but I actually got a thank you note from one of our largest advertisers saying that this was the tool that made their executive team sit up and really start prioritizing mobile site speed. So if you're in the same place and you are having a hard time getting your development team or your executive team to pay attention, 
This is a great tool that you can use to tell a stronger story for why speed matters and how it impacts your business. Now, step three. You have everybody on board. You know why site speed matters. You, uh, you know why site speed matters. You need to find out what and where the problem really is. The good news is we've made this step easy. We recently announced the landing page performance report in AdWords, right alongside your targeting and creative reporting. Because if you're going to optimize your campaigns, you need to start by understanding how your ad's landing pages are performing. This report will tell you which of your pages are mobile unfriendly, how your pages convert relative to one another, and other key KPIs like how well you're doing at turning a visitor into a customer. And now, step four, your final and absolutely most important step. You have to make your mobile web pages faster. This is where I encourage you to check out AMP, or Accelerated Mobile Pages. AMP pages load crazy fast, often in under one second. We know that AMP pages load 85% faster than standard mobile web pages. And that's why in the last five, two years, over five billion AMP pages have been published across advertisers and publishers like eBay, Johnson & Johnson, and the Wall Street Journal. One of the best examples actually comes from one of the world's largest automotive retailers, BMW. BMW wanted to build a high-performance, mobile-first content marketing site that had engaging stories, videos, and images. They had two top focuses. They wanted to build the fastest automotive site, so they focused on speed, and two, they wanted to deliver uh, very interesting content. Development took about six months, and since then, performance has been massively impacted. The new page is not only beautiful, but it loads four times faster than before. And the percentage of visitors clicking through from BMW.com to a national sales company website has soared from 8% to, to 30%, which is really an incredible increase. Based on the success of companies like BMW, we recently announced AdWords support for AMP pages. You can now direct your paid search traffic to AMP landing pages to deliver the super fast, delightful mobile experience your users have come to expect. And like I mentioned before, a great landing page experience is critical to your bottom line. So for anyone who wants to improve their return on ad spend, I highly suggest you have your developers investigate AMP. As I leave you here today, I want to ask that you do two things. I want you to see how you stack up to your competition, and I want you to quantify how much revenue you could, you're possibly leaving on the table. Because in this ever-changing, always competitive marketplace, to win on mobile, you can't just be fast, but you have to be faster than your competition. And you've all built such beautiful, incredible, engaging content marketing sites that your users want to read. The faster your page is, the more people will be able to get there and see it and engage with the content that you all worked so hard to create. And that's why we're all here today. So find out how fast you are, quantify your revenue. And to do all of this and get started, go to the URL on the screen. Thank you all so much.